Hello, my name is Sue Keogh and I'm the founder of a digital marketing agency in Cambridge and I'm also someone that's got a real bee in her bonnet about the way that younger people keep on having the rug pulled out from under their feet again and again. So if it's not their education being disrupted due to the pandemic, then it's unpaid internships holding good people back from getting a solid start in their career. And so in this talk, I'm going to tell you all about this thing that we did called Agency Bootcamp. So it was a week of remote work experience. We came up with the whole idea just in seven days and put it into practice. And we had 20 students doing creative challenges. We had team spotlights. We had career Q&As. And at the end of it, they came out with something tangible for their CVs. And I was so pleased because so many of them went on to get really good jobs at the end of it. So we did it all again. <laughs> so what I want to do in this talk is share with you some of the things that we learned so you can steal all of our approaches and go away and put it into practice yourself. Okay, so I'm now going to talk you through Agency Bootcamp, which was this amazing week of work experience that we did all remotely, and it was so successful the first time round that we did it all again the following year. So. These are all the lovely people that uh, that joined us. These are the people from year one and from year two. Hello to all these people. And so what I'm going to run you through, first of all, setting the scene a bit. So to tell you how we came up with the idea, why we did it at all, and just our kind of our thinking before we went into the whole process. And then because I want to really share our learnings so that you can go away and do all this yourself as well, then a little bit, I'm going to run you through all the planning that we did, which is so important in making it success. And then also what we did during the week. So it's this amazing week of creative challenges, team spotlights, careers, Q&A, all sorts of things like that. And then, of course, the after. And uh, I don't know about you, but I work a lot in events or I, I'm going to events or I'm dealing with people who do events. And um, that after period is actually really important. So instead of just, you know, turning off that Zoom uh, call for the very last time, and then going down the pub, <laughs> then it's really important to actually do that wrap up uh, stuff as well. So um, just to set the scene, so how did the idea come about? So I run a digital marketing agency in Cambridge, and I'm also very mindful of all these things that are affecting younger people nowadays. I've got two teenagers myself, um, and of course the whole you know school system, university system was really disrupted by the pandemic. And so all the exams were disrupted, GCSEs and A-levels. And then fast forward to when the results came out in um, August 2020, it was a bit of a disaster. You know, it's really badly handled. And I was thinking, oh, not again. You know, why do they have to keep on putting up with this? It's really bad. And then at the same time, we had a, uh, a student that had come to us looking for work experience. But of course, we were under lockdown or in and out of lockdown. The office was closed. And so we weren't there. And I was thinking, well, this is going to be pretty boring <laughs> doing it all over Zoom for a week or two weeks even and just sitting there watching us typing effectively. That's pretty boring. And I was thinking, well, how could we make it more lively? And then I had this kind of light bulb moment thinking, well, OK, so by the time we make it more lively for one person, because we are going to have to do it remotely, then actually we could do it in an interesting, lively way for, for more than that. And so this was August 2020 and we came up with the idea. I chatted to the team. Everyone thought it sounded great. And so within a week we had 20 people. <laughs> so this is nine o'clock on the Monday morning. We had all these people here. And so the goal was I wanted to really offer real world experience to increase employability. So it wasn't some kind of vanity exercise where, oh, isn't it nice just to chat to some lovely, talented young people for a week? I really wanted to make sure that they got something really valuable about it and that it would, it, you know, they'd come out the other end more employable. And also so we'd help them create something tangible for their portfolio. So it wouldn't be just a case of on their CV. OK, I did a week's work experience here. There'd be something actual um, actually well, that they could link to, you know, they could show somewhere. And then the third thing is I wanted to open things up through an effective online format. So our office, for example, it's lovely. We've got six rooms there. We've got all this space. It's a really creative space. Um, we started off with seven people at the start of the pandemic. We've come out the other side with 10. So, you know, it's really humming, buzzing and lively. But one downside is that it's up. It's on the first floor. So you have to go up some uh, metal stairs to get there. Um, so, of course, it doesn't make it very accessible, which is a bit of a downside. So using this remote format was another way of me thinking, aha, you know, I can open things up a bit. 
So in numbers, the first year we had 20 students, 17 members, uh, five days, 17 Zoom calls, eight creative briefs, four training sessions, and out the other end, at the, the end of it, we had five blog posts, one ident, which you'll have seen already as part of this talk, four creative promos, so I'll explain how we got people to put those together, eight men mentoring sessions, so um, we did a couple pretty soon after, and then there's someone that I've carried on mentoring afterwards, and then she as well along the way has said, oh, could you talk to this friend of mine about getting into the industry as well? So um, that's all come out of it. And then at least six jobs secured, and all the people have said to me, oh, thank you, and I'm, I'm not taking a credit for, <laughs> for you know, that instantly um, causing them to, to land, uh, land that perfect job. But all of these roles um, are, are ones that people who attended our first boot camp went into following on from, from joining us for the week of work experience. And this is really nice, this comment that someone said, it's amazing how much I learned in one week. I can honestly say that without the experience, I wouldn't be in the job that I'm in today. So that was really lovely. Your session on CVs and applications gave me the knowledge and confidence to put myself out there and the rest all seemed to fall into place from there. So it was so nice and it, it really is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something really practical that gave people valuable real world experience. And what I want from this talk is to share some of this knowledge with you. So then you can go away and you can do it as well because it's so difficult for younger people to get that first foot on the ladder nowadays. And this whole thing about unpaid, unpaid internships just drives me crazy because it's just so unfair. You know, you're expecting people to work for you for free for months on end. They're paying their rent, they're paying their food, they're paying their travel. And in London, we all know how expensive that's going to be. And it just seems so unfair that younger people are being expected to do this. And it's so widespread now, particularly in the creative industries. And I just refuse to do it. And so if you're looking for a good way of levelling the playing field, then something like this to open up work experience to people can make such a difference. Um, you know, there's people that have done work experience in person with us a couple of years ago that I'm still in touch with now and I'm still helping out and I'm still offering advice to. And, and it's just so important. And I think people that generation above, you know, maybe I'm two generations above some of these people, um, you know, we forget because we're here, we're in the industry, we're doing it. We forget how difficult it can be. And one of the girls that I've mentored, she said that thousands of people applied for this paid internship with Sony that she was going for. You know, it really hit home to me how hard it is. So, so the more people who watch this talk and go away and steal our tips, the better as far as I'm concerned. So here's some of the lovely people that joined us um, in the first year. Hello, hello, all you lovely people. And then so it's so successful that we thought the next year, well, let's just do it again. Um, and so this time we had about 21 students. We had a couple of people dropping out. So there's one girl, she was actually in Sierra Leone. And every time it rained, the Internet went down. Um, and so she struggled with attendance. Um, it must have been quite a rainy season. Um, and a couple of people, I think because it was for free, it's a natural thing that other things come up. You know, maybe people have job interviews to go to or they get work. So um, maybe expect a natural bit of drop off, you know. But so we had 21 people who applied and who, you know, who we gave a place to. Um, by this point, there were 19 members who got involved. Um, two special guests that I invited in. We did it over five days, 15 Zoom calls, eight creative briefs, four training sessions, and then five blog posts again, creative promos. Um, so it, it took place in August, and the time that I'm doing this, it's currently in um, you know, autumn that we're recording this. So we haven't quite seen yet what the result has been, you know, what the impact is in terms of jobs. Um, one job interview that actually happened during the week. So we were able to give us some live advice and saying, oh, good luck, good luck. You know, this is how you impress in your interview. And then job secured, you know, I'm really gunning for these people, hoping that they, that it's all gone well. And then there are all sorts of creative promos like this. So I'll run you through some of these, uh, the briefs in a second. But one of them was to pitch an idea to us for a creative promo. So something that we could put out on Instagram or LinkedIn or, or somewhere else. And this girl came up with this really good. And she was the one who went for the job interview. So I, I'm really hoping that she, she got it. Um, I was all up for writing her reference and everything. Um, these are the blog posts that we published as well. So um, all kind of, you know, interesting things, um, introverts and extroverts, 
Um, I got them to analyse campaigns from big name um, brands. And then they also pitched some ideas to us as well. So something that they were interested in that they could write about for the blog. So it all ties in with what I was saying about wanting to make sure they came out of it with something tangible so they could say, look, this is the thing I wrote for this digital marketing agency. And so it will help them get jobs. So that's a little overview just to set the scene. Um, and then this is what we did before. And like all things in life, the more time you can spend planning, the more efficiently things will run, the more time you save, you know, the better experience it is for everybody. And this was no difference, um, no different. And we learned a lot from what we did the first time around, we applied the second. The actual nature of the, the week itself and the, the activities didn't change so much, but it was what we did in the in the planning stage. Because, um, you know, if you remember me saying just now, we came up with the idea in a space of a week. And so I don't think the actual idea would have improved in a way. You know, sometimes having more time doesn't help you. However, the planning side was something that we definitely focused on more the second time round. So this is from the first one that we did. So want marketing work experience? You know, we've got that keyword in the in the title. Um, we put this blog post up so we'd have a central point of information to point people towards. So I wouldn't be explaining it again and again in emails. So a really nice positive image and a blog post on our website. So that gave us something to share and to link to on social media. And then I've got quite a lot of contacts on LinkedIn, 6,000. So I put it out there, nice and easy to read. Lots of people tagged their friends and said, oh, oh would this be of interest? Why don't you come along to this? So that was good. That got loads of views, what 5,000 in that screenshot there. I also put it out on Twitter, so I've got a similar number of connections on Twitter and that got shared, um, you know, went really uh, crazy. So at the time I took this screen grab, then it had um, about 10,000 impressions. So that spread really widely. And at this point, I didn't know were people going to be interested? <laughs> Was it going to be of, of you know, use to anybody. And so I'm happy to say that we got a good solid number of people. You know, 20 was a really good number of people to have. If you have too many, then you can't really give your, uh, you know, decent amount of time to all of them. But then the second time round, um, this is great because when we put our blog post out, we had something to refer to. So we put in a screen grab of bootcamp year one. We knew what the format was going to be. We were really clear about the start and end date. So we did the same thing again, where we had this central point for the information. And then this time round, one thing we did differently, we had an application form. So instead of me fielding all of these emails coming in and then having to explain it and all of that, this time we had a way to collect the information. And I definitely recommend any more, any sort of automation that you can include, you'll really thank yourself for it later. All the comms around it can get quite, quite messy if you're not careful. And so this time around as well, I created a bootcamp email address. So that meant that it wasn't going through all of my, all of it going through my email. Um, it meant that other people in the team all had a login for bootcamp at sukio.com and then they could, um, they could check it as well, which meant that I wasn't taking on the load of doing everything, which I kind of did the first time around, but that's my own silly fault. Um, for coming up with an idea in seven days and then putting it into practice. This time around, that was the big thing that I wanted to change, all of the admin, um, just to make sure that everything went a bit more, uh, was a bit more slick. Uh, Trello, we like Trello for a bit of planning. And let me see if I can make this play. Oh, I think I can. So we had a Trello board where we just had a checklist for all the stuff that needed to be done before. As you can see, it's quite a lot. All the things that we needed to do during all the things that we were going to do afterwards. And this meant that I could assign tasks to people and say, right, you're the administrator, you need to do this. You're the social media person, you need to be in charge of promoting on Instagram. And that was so much better. And it meant that we could communicate in a way that's much more effective. So once we had our applicants on board, then I sent out this overview document to them, just giving them a bit of a greeting and making sure that they were really kind of in the, in the right mindset that manage the expectations were being managed. And so it told them why we were doing it, what was going to happen, various things about getting consent. So they were going to be filmed um, because we wanted to film some of the sessions. So I made sure I got that in advance because you don't want someone afterwards saying, oh, I didn't know it's going to be filmed or you can't use that bit of content. Um, we gave them all of the uh, social media links, um, the links to actually attend the sessions. 
I cannot stress that enough how important that is. If you're doing it over Zoom, just tell people in every single um, bit of communication how they can actually access it and make sure that just try and use the same link all the way through. One issue we had in the first uh, boot camp week was that on the Thursday, my Zoom account was already being used for something else. And it meant just on that one day that we had to give them a different link. And no matter how many times we explained it, there was still that one person who said, oh, I've got the wrong link. So try and use the same link all the way through. You'll really thank yourself for it. So just to sum up, so before the event, try and set really clear objectives and share them. So you know about them, the team knows about them, everyone coming knows what they're there to achieve. Define who's in and who's out. So when I did the post on LinkedIn um, and on Twitter saying who, sh who should join, I was really clear about saying what level it was at. Um, and so I said it's people who are kind of graduate level because I wanted to make sure that anyone that was attending any of the sessions didn't feel either like, oh, I know all this. Oh, I'm the expert in the room and it takes over, which does happen sometimes when I'm doing training. Or equally, that they're a bit, you know, they're not up to speed. And then they sit there thinking, oh, I don't really want to ask any questions. And everyone knows so much about this. Um, so that's really good to really make it clear who's in and who's out. And also, you don't want loads of people just sort of badgering you trying to get in. You're thinking, oh, no, I, I wish I'd be more clear in the first place, um, because that can be a bit awkward and embarrassing. So I would like to do one further down the line for kind of school's age. So I will go back and do that. But in this, I was very clear to say, yeah, it's that it's that kind of level. And then that means all the peer to peer connections that go on are also quite valuable as well. I'm hoping that a lot of these people will stay in touch with each other. And it's really good to get on top of the admin early. Can't stress that enough. So set up an email address for all the communications, a Trello board for planning or whatever tool you use for planning. S spreadsheets, you know, you can't beat an old fashioned spreadsheet. Define who's doing what so nothing gets forgotten. All of that planning in advance doesn't actually take that much time, but spending that extra time means that it goes really smoothly because actually once it kicks off on the Monday morning, then, you know, everything just goes so quickly and it's Friday afternoon before you know it. So also share the timetable, the contact information, the Zoom links 100,000 million times. So then it's really clear, you know, get people to test the link in advance and all of that sort of stuff then it will go much more smoothly. And then also clearing the diary. So it was a big learning point for me. I just kind of merrily expected that, OK, we'll have this timetable. We've, we've got regular bits of downtime. That's when I'll catch up on my work. It'll be fine. However, what happened in reality was that I ended up working really late every night, just trying to do the stuff in my regular day job that takes a bit of focus time. So just manage your own expectations on this. I certainly didn't realise how much more time it was going to take. And then the week after, I was still catching up and I was shattered. <laughs> I had a bit of a, an adrenaline crash the week, uh, the week after both years, actually, um, even though I was expecting it because I was on such a high from doing this event. I just didn't realise that the next week I'd, I'd be a bit sort of a bit blue. Um, and there's quite a lot of stuff to do to follow up. OK, so the next thing is about during the week. And what we were trying to do was this. Oh, there's my face <laughs> was a really engaging mix of um, online content. So where they'd be on a Zoom call and offline. So I really wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a case of being on a Zoom call every day. So every morning I did a little video like this. Good morning. I can't believe it's a whole year since we last ran Agency Bootcamp, but it's back and it's bigger than ever. <laughs> So we're about to kick off a whole week of remote work experience. We're going to have about 25 people who are kind of graduate level joining us for a week of um, all sorts of activities where we're going to take them behind the scenes in a digital marketing agency. So we're going to have creative challenges, we're going to have little spotlights on team members and the whole goal of it is to introduce people to the industry, get them familiar with all the sort of terms they're going to come across and hopefully give them something tangible when they come out the other end that they'll be able to add to their portfolio, which is going to increase em employability, much like it did for last year's attendees, which I'm really, really proud about. So we're going to keep you updated as we go, and uh, I'm going to dash off and dive in. OK, bye. So yeah, so every morning on um, Instagram, I did just a little video saying, hey, today we're talking about copywriting or we're talking about video. And that was really nice, you know, and it helped us share with the outside world some of the stuff that's going on. So we had a simple timetable and it worked so effectively in year one that we just did pretty much the same format the second year. Um, so every day we started off, we had our team um, 
like daily conversation. And uh, so we did that. So they got to join us in our meeting and just sort of saw behind the scenes in a marketing agency. Um, at nine o'clock, we did a career spotlight. So on the first the, on a Monday morning, I did a thing on me and how I got into the industry and also what is a marketing agency? Because actually the word agency, unless you're in it, you don't necessarily know what it means. So I demystified a few terms and that was another kind of side goal to not just give them experience, but but arm them with the language that people use and and the structures and, and all of those kind of things that really until you're in the thick of it, you don't really don't really know. So um, every day I did a career spotlight. So day one was kind of on me. And then I interviewed a digital strategist on Tuesday. I spoke to a copywriter friend of mine. She came and joined us um, video production. So all of those things. So they got to understand the different roles. And then one o'clock every day, I either did another spotlight or did a training session. So on the Friday, I did LinkedIn. And then in between, I set them these creative challenges. So this was stuff that they could go off and work on independently. And then four o'clock every day or thereabouts, we had a little catch up and to see how they get on. So this is Marissa, our um, head of creative. And this is her talking to everybody, talking about her role and being generally quite, quite animated, uh, which is her way of doing things. And then we had these creative challenges. So it might be something around planning a social media campaign. Uh, win the work, that was a sales task. So it wasn't all um, creative stuff. It was actually, you know, the what keeps our wheels a turning is making sales and bringing, bringing the projects in. So that was, uh, they're all based on real life projects that we do as well. And then one of them was a creative promo. So pitch us an idea and we'll, we'll hopefully go away and make it. And we gave them really valuable feedback as well. So it wasn't just a case of us saying, yeah, yeah, we like this, we don't. We really helped them structure the idea and gave them feedback as well, which is really important. So one of them, in fact, was to um, sit still, don't move and just pick up your phone or, or um, look around you and see if you can make something mundane interesting and so this girl came she just found some little lights actually lights are quite exciting but then she turned it into the Sukio logo which is quite fun and some of them um, we actually they had to pitch us an idea and then we went away and made it and this one I love this you will this will be familiar to you already I hope she came up with the idea of taking the Sukio logo and then having kind of heads poking out between the O's. And while she was talking, I thought, oh, no, this is interesting. We can actually turn this into um, an ident and let's get some animation involved. So the week after boot camp, my animator friend came round, sat in a garden. The weather was still warm enough in August. And we came up with the idea of doing this, um, this animated ident. So we now use this across all of our video content so she can look at this and she can be in an interview and say, right, I came up with that creative concept that this digital marketing agency went away and, and made and they use it. So, you know, this is what I mean about it being real world, um, tangible stuff for their portfolio rather than anything too kind of um, airy fairy. So it looks like this. So that was when it was at drawing board stage. And then we added the click clap noises, which are very satisfying. Excuse my uh, puppy in the background. <laughs> Look, there she goes. Um, she wants to be on camera. So um, then on a Friday, both years, we did something a little bit different. So I wanted to make it careers day. So year one, we had a um, CV clinic. So this is another agency owner friend of mine, Kelly. And so we spoke about how to stand out in your CV, covering letter, interview, that kind of thing. Um, and then the next year we had James Cotton, who runs another agency, and we took it a step further. So a little bit of CV stuff, but then also how to impress in the early months and a new job, that kind of thing. And those sort of different skills that you might need. Uh, one o'clock, I did a training session. And then at half three, we did a careers Q&A with the whole team and announced the winners. And then at half four, we did happy hour. <laughs> so this is a shot kind of slightly uh, awkwardly taken when I was sitting at my desk. So along the way, because I knew there might be a little bit of downtime, I also came up with this read, watch, listen list. And so this was um, yeah, blog posts to read, podcasts to listen to, books to buy and access to Sukio School, which is our little sideline of um, online courses. And so the idea was that the learning would still carry on long after the event was over. Um, so hopefully they're still dipping into that. So I said to them, try and try and read or listen to three of these a day. Um, so that was really good. So this helped. Um, with that whole idea of, well, we don't want them just to be on Zoom the whole time. Uh, we need to make sure that, um, you know, there's there's ways that they can just carry on learning. So during the week, you should set the scene on day one. 
let people know what they're going to get, help them get to know each other. So that was an interesting bit in the feedback that we got that um, some people said, oh, the only thing I would have done differently would be to have something at the beginning where we could get to know each other. So we did include more of a, a sort of icebreaker challenge. Plan for Zoom, Zoom fatigue, so get a mix of online and offline activities. Mix up the formats and, uh, and the focus as well. So I made sure that there were some copywriting challenges, some video, so mix of visual and, and things where people were speaking. Anything to make sure that everyone attended, they felt like they could achieve something. That maybe someone who is very visual wasn't sort of stumped by all the challenges being to do a copywriting, for example. Create the read, watch, listen list. That's really good. So they've got something else to refer to. Give people tangible, uh, something tangible for their portfolio. Creating a back channel for comms. So we had a private Slack channel for the team so we could quickly update each other about how it was going. And so that I could also say thank you to people, you know, well done on that team spotlight. That was really good. So we had that and it was more private so that the, um, the boot camp attendees couldn't see. And of course, expect long hours. So it's going to be a long day. You know, it's going to be quite intense. So if you can divvy it up so that there's other people involved, that's great. I quite enjoyed being the host all the way through for that continuity as well. So but yeah, just expect long hours because it does. Um, it's quite involved if you take on a similar project. Now, after the event, as I was saying earlier, it's really important to follow up afterwards and to allow yourself the time to do it. So if you think it's a case of half five on a Friday after happy hour, boom, everything stops and that's the end of that. Start again on Monday morning, then then actually there is quite a lot of following up to do. So try and build that into your time. And so in the spirit of trying to automate stuff as much as possible and, and keep the comms um, you know, efficient if we could, then we also created a form on our website. We emailed around everyone who'd attended to say thank you, you know, well done on all of your contributions and just to tell them about anything that might happen next. And then we asked them to share some feedback with us. Um, so they did that in this nice handy form. And they said some lovely things. So, um, you know, they told us that they enjoyed the topics. Um, they said that, uh, you know, they told us which of the challenges were really useful. Um, and it was good for us to know what we were doing right. There was nothing in particular that people pointed out that we were doing wrong. But this was the point that people said, oh, actually, you know, that that intro on a Monday morning might have been really handy. So we made every effort to build that in the next year. And then because they're very polite young people and they remember their manners, then a lot of them sent us little e emails to follow up to say thank you. So I was really happy about that as well. And then we set about turning some of the creative promos into um, actual things that could go on our social media channels. This went out on Instagram. It's very cute. <laughs> um, we wrote blog posts. So this was a roundup um, from the first year with me. I just wanted to get it all out, actually, and just write down um, how it had gone and this whole idea of wanting people to steal our ideas. So I put that out in a blog post. We also um, asked the students, one of the challenges was around analysing a campaign. So we asked them to write it out. Um, you saw a screen grab of year two earlier with um, Google and, and Dove and all the rest of it. So this is from year one and one of the posts that people wrote. And the nice thing is that these are performing really well a year on. This is still bringing us quite a lot of traffic to the website, uh, which, of course, we didn't know was going to happen at the time. But that's just nice to see. And so then we turned uh, this one is from the Friday morning career session. So we also turned that into a video for YouTube. We added captions. And so this has made a really nice lasting bit of content that we can also share with other people trying to get into the industry, which, as you know, is one of these kind of goals of mine. This is one of the reasons why we wanted to do, do it all in the first place. So it means that the content and the activity can benefit other people as well. It's not just something that the people who attended the boot camps in person um, would benefit from. It means that we can actually share this expertise with people too. So that's really nice. So after the event, you should definitely ask for feedback. Hopefully it's all going to be positive, but then this helps you learn and do things slightly differently the following year. Say thank you. So say thank you to the people that attended. Also, say thank you to the team. You know, it's a great opportunity for some personal professional development and they will have put a lot into it as well. If you're the business owner, you've probably delegated a few more things than usual. So saying thank you is always a good idea. Write a blog post, try and showcase the work from the people that attended. And then long term, see if you can offer some sort of career support as well. So maybe there's people that you can mentor. Um, maybe you can write some testimonials for LinkedIn, all that kind of thing. 
So I hope you found our experiences useful. Um, it's really uh, great to to try and share all of this with people. And, you know, I'd love it if someone watching this talk today stole some of our ideas and went off and set up some remote work experience as well. Um, so the ways that you can keep in touch with us, our blog, as you've seen, is full of all sorts of useful digital marketing advice and learnings. And, you know, we love learning about this stuff and sharing it, too. So do follow that. Um, our mailing list, we send out two newsletters a month. So one is a letter to, letter from the editor, which is me, um, and I kind of share insights from the founder. And then we also have the blog blast, as we call it internally, which is lots of tips um, and also news about any web webinars and workshops that we've got coming up. So in the spirit of sharing our learning, you know, we do a lot of this sort of stuff. I mentioned Sukio School, which you can follow at um, uh, Skillshare. And then also we love social media. So you can always find us at Sukio um, all over Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube and all the rest of it. So I hope you found that useful. Um, and uh, I look forward to keeping in touch. If there's anything else that you want to follow up on, ask me more questions, then just fire away. Thank you. And you're about to see our beautiful ident all over again.